Stricter does it again. What else can you say, really, about Alexi Olenek? He's still got it. Alexi, the boa constrictor, Olenek. CTV, the Korean zombie does it again. I won Volkanovski. The Korean Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're at it. And with that, we start. Matt came in upside down and dropped his camera. Welcome to UFC Un Unfiltered. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so happy to see you. I, I'm Jimmy. I know it's down to the wire. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's my buddy, my brown belt, Augie. It's his, it's his birthday today. So I, was, I stopped down at the school, Sarah BJJ, and I rolled with him for his birthday. And damn, I ain't going to lie to you. I was hoping he'd get tired, but he wasn't getting tired. So we went a while. I, mean, I must have rolled like 45 minutes, dude. I feel fucking good. I feel like a fucking savage. But so does he. Happy birthday, Augie. His whole family trains with me. Oh, really? His wife, his daughter's like 15. She's old, so she's older than my daughter's 13, so she beats up on my daughter, gets her tough. Her, her, her son, his son, the wife, everybody trains at my school, so I had a good time with him. I gave out a couple of promotions, big googs, and uh, to Purple Belt, and, uh, and uh, Eric to fucking Purple Belt as well. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, bud. Let's bring in. We have Chan Sung Jung is waiting. Let's. Uh, oh, shit. Get him in. Yes, let's bring him in here. Fighting uh, Alexander Volkanovsky on Saturday night for the Featherweight Championship. I'm really looking forward to this fight. Um, Volkanovsky has looked pretty incredible um, so far. I'm just sitting there telling you about my. Oh, that's all right. I mean, we got to start. Be fighting for the championship. Waiting. That's all right. He's, he's coming in. We'll, we'll get him in. Hello. Oh, you see? Hi. We see you. Yes, sir. How are you? Good, good. Everything's good. Um, we haven't talked to you in a year and a half. Congratulations on getting this uh, title shot. I know you have waited for a while to get a second shot at the title. A lot of people have been congratulating him for getting the title shot. So um, he would like to be congratulated after he actually wins the belt. And um, it's been a long time since he uh, got an opportunity to go for the belt again. And uh, he's very excited and he's ready and anticipating to uh, win the belt. Hey, zombie. I feel you, man. Don't you think sometimes people, oh, the belt, the belt. It, mentally, it's another fight, right? It's another fight, zombie. You're made for this stuff. <laughs> Translate that, please. <laughs> yeah, actually, that belt, belt <coughs> thing where everybody's like uh, wanting him to win the belt was actually, it did uh, play a mental toll on him. So that's why he uh, brought in a mindset coach to kind of like uh, toughen up his mental and uh, mentality. And that really helped him out uh, a lot uh, in the preparation of the fight. And now he's, he really doesn't care about whether or not he, he wins the belt. Uh, he looks at this as an opportunity to show how strong he is, show how uh, talented and skilled he is. So he's thrilled to uh, uh, thrill for uh, April night. That's really interesting. And, and I love when fighters are honest about the, the mental uh, issues too, or the mental things they have to grapple with. What did the mental coach help? How did he help? Was it when you would feel stress, he was able to calm you down? Or what was it that he was able to do for you? So um, a lot of people have been like telling him what kind of mentality he needs to bring on into the cage, but nobody told him why he needs to uh, have that mentality when he uh, goes up to the case. So the mindset coach kind of actually explained why he needs to think in this way, why he needs this perspective. And, um, you know, the mindset coach explained about hormones. Like if you think in this way, this hormone comes out and that helps you physically in this way. So it was a very scientific and specific way of uh, helping him build a strong mental. So in that sense, the mindset coach really helped him out a lot. You know, cause I was thinking about your fights 
And I was thinking that you've always exhibited great toughness and great mental toughness because after a loss, you always come back with something really, a, 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 a TKO win. Uh, you seem to be somebody that handles adversity very well. So it's all about learning for him. Uh, he does uh, handle adversities pretty well, but it's all about, because he thinks he's not perfect. I mean, he could handle it better. So it's all about striving towards um, improvement, um, trying to handle adversities better than he handles it right now. So that's what really uh, helped him develop a lot, even though he's renowned for his uh, mental and physical toughness. I'll tell you, Jimmy, I cannot be more excited. Alexander Volkanovsky. Volkanovsky. <laughs> he's been looking unstoppable. Uh, do you study a lot of tape with your with your coaches, or do you let them study the tape and just tell you what to do? There are two types of analysis. Uh, there's zombies analysis, and there there are the coaches analysis. So they um, anal analyze Volkanovski in both ways, and they get together, they talk about it, and then try to use that in sparring sessions where um you know a certain technique or a certain strategy uh would work better on volkanovsky or work better on the sparring partner he's fighting so they kind of like sit down together and talk about their own opinions and uh they put them together and come up with new strategies to uh, win the belt and you did two years in the military did um was that really hard for you to step away from fighting or because you knew you had to do it, was it one of those things that it's just, it's a part of your life that you know you have to do? H how did you make that adjustment to step away from such a, a good career and, and do your military service? It's all about perspective. Like, for example, if, if somebody has to step away from the ring and go to military service, some might think, oh man, my career is over. I need to be uh, away from the ring for two years. There's going to be ring rust and, you know, my career is going to be uh, severely damaged. But then on the other hand, there are people who can, who thinks, uh, you know, this two year uh, two year uh, break uh, would help me take a good break so that I'm in good condition when I step back in the ring. So it's all about perspective. Uh, Zombie's perspective is the latter. So he tried to think of it in a positive way, and he actually did take a good two year three year break, uh, and then came back with Bermuda. So uh, he thinks it's a very positive. He was he he thinks of it positively. Perspective, Jimmy. Yeah. Well, I, I guess being a fighter and your you, military schedule is probably not as hard for you because you're used to getting up and training. You're used to being on a schedule. You're used to doing things physically you don't want to do sometimes. So the military probably was not a difficult physical adjustment. A lot of people uh, misunderstand about uh, zombies military service because uh, because he had a lot of injuries. Uh, he had the shoulder injury in the auto fight uh, because his body was uh, really kind of like, um, for the lack of a better word, messed up. Um, he, the country uh, gave him the opportunity to serve as a service agent, which does not require a lot of physical training. So he worked in the office. So he, he didn't really, you know, have, he didn't really have any struggle uh, with the military service. Hey, you know what? I want to, enough of this MMA stuff. I want to know what the zombie does on his day off. What does he do to unwind? When he's not training, uh, not nothing to do with training. What does he like to do? Read a book, watch a movie. Tell me, zombie. All right, so uh, zombie said, I don't know if you guys have like kids, but uh, 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 he has three kids. And so um, during his free time, he spends most of the time, you know, uh, hang out with, their, with, with his kids, you know, trying to play with them. Me too. We got that in common, zombie. Awesome. Yeah, I, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any kids, so my days off are boring. Um, and you're feeling obviously very ready. How how do you manage when you're getting ready for a fight like this? How do you manage the tension? And how do you manage uh, being afraid or how not to project too much? How, how do you manage your own head headspace before you fight? In the past, he probably would have been very pressured. Like he would have felt felt the pressure. Uh, would have been very nervous about it. But um, um, right now, uh, he's he's you know mentally very uh, prepared, and he thinks of it as uh, an opportunity to show himself, like show his skills. It's been his like long long time dream like for his whole life. It's been like that in the past. It is still his goal right now. And uh, he dare say it will be the biggest dream, like, uh, you know, uh, in the future as well. So this is his biggest, biggest opportunity in his whole entire life. 
And the way he sees it is not uh, look at it as an obligation to win, but to, to be able to enjoy the whole opportunity because this is a big shot and nobody, you know, not a lot of people get this. So, you know, it's all about enjoying. So he's trying to enjoy this uh, opportunity as much as he can. I was going to say, Jimmy, speaking of enjoying every, every fight, people say that people like this fan favorites, guys are never in a boring fight. I mean, the Korean zombie, not only is he never in a boring fight, all his fights are spectacular. They're always like fight of, up for fight of the year. It's fucking amazing. Jimmy, Saturday not, could not come soon enough. Yeah. Let's not keep this man. Let's let him get out of here. I had a fucking... <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> and good luck on Saturday night. Uh, a lot of people are, are pulling for you. You really are loved by the fans. And uh, Volkanovski is a, a, a great champion. I think his fight with Brian Ortega, him surviving, I think that third round really changed the way people felt about him. He's a legitimate champion, but uh, a lot of people are pulling for you on Saturday night. So uh, good luck on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All Talk right. to you again. much fun with the zombie i like and him a lot yeah it's always a little strange with a translator because i get animated i ramble and I, I feel bad for the guy because you always want to make sure that it's being translated properly you always want to make sure i know that's why i try to talk a little slower not because i think the guy is dumb but just because it, i know that when, when they're translated they're trying to hear you remember what you say and translate it and it's that's a that's a horrible job translate that's a rough job man all I know is I get kind of animated and there's times when I feel like the Korean zombie was looking at me like I'm a cartoon character. I'm like, ah, zombie! And he's like, oh. So I don't know, because he might not understand what I'm saying, so I get it. Right. I get it. I'm a little much. No. No, Matt. Jimmy, I was very loud this morning. Matt. I'll just be rolling, Jimmy, and I'll just scream, let's go! I'll be like, let's fucking go! And his new students there, they're like, what the fuck? That's all right. I, I yell that while I'm jerking off. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> oh, shit, I'm light-headed. Hey, you want to uh, predict a couple of these fights before we have Alexi Olenek, too, who's actually fighting on the uh, early prelims against Jared Vendara, which is crazy. Let's do a couple of picks, because I'm uh, this This is such a fuck... I mean, I enjoy seeing a Rosen strike, Marcin Tibora, that's, that's a prelim fight. Uh, Mickey Gall's on the prelims. Pennington Aspen Ladd is on the prelims. There's some incredibly good fights. Um, Anthony Hernandez against uh, 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 Josh Framed is on uh, on the uh, early prelims. There's some incredible fights. Oh, dude, this is the whole wow. What time? And I, I love when it starts regular time. Vince Pichel, Marco Madsen uh, is the uh, opening fight. Um, wow. What do you think? You know, I'm going to go. I like them both. I really do. They're both coming off two wins. I know Mark's. Uh, Undefeated, yeah. But uh, I'm going to go with Vince. I'm going to go with Vince by uh, decision. You know, by decision and by kill a mustache. Um, I think Madsen takes it. If I'm on the fence. Yep. The mustache makes me root for that guy. Um, I'm going to take, what's that? <laughs> I'm only fucking around. But I, I like Vince. I think Vince is a, uh, a well-rounded guy. I think because he's so quiet, he doesn't get enough, uh, praise. You know, he only has a couple losses and, um, you know, he's a fucking dangerous guy. I like Vince to push out. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to take, uh, I, I think, uh, Madsen stays, uh, undefeated. Oh, well, you're so fucking cool, Jimmy. I, th I think he wins. I'm going to say he stops him in the second round. I wanted to go with decision, um, but I, because you said decision, I got to take something different. You ever think of your friends that died, Jimmy? Yeah. I'm sorry to throw that. Jeez, I, I just throw that in there. No, you. I do, of course. I've been, I'm, I'm so not trying to depress you right now. Oh, it's okay. But uh, Believe me, people are wishing it was me. So. <laughs> I've been watching stuff with your old pal, Patrice O'Neal. I'm so sorry to bring that. I don't I don't want to get you emotional. No, no, I'm okay. I loved him. You have no part. I'm only doing no, I do. I, I Patrice is one of the toughest deaths I've had in my life. I, I, it's still a really hard one, but uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm happy that a, it makes me grateful. I'm still alive. Like when your friends die of natural causes, it makes you grateful you're alive. And I also, I'm lucky. I, I was as close to him as I was, and I knew him as well as I did. And I had a tremendous amount of interactions with him. Some it's weird. How some, did you ever have like, like some people die? you like, it, it, I don't know. You feel like affection. You didn't know them as well. I don't know. I'm not with me with Patricia O'Neill and out there. I'm just saying like, yeah, I know what you're saying. Sure. Yeah. People or whatever. It's, I don't know. It's weird. But uh, I've been watching stuff with him lately. And uh, I, I told you that Norm McDonald's one kind of hit me hard. Norm was great, yeah. I really, really enjoyed his body of work. And it's like, it kind of sucks that you're not going to get anything more out of them. It's like, nah, is that, that might be selfish. No, it's, it's, it's common. You know, it's so, I don't know. It's also, sometimes it's just a simple fact of when you don't know somebody as well, you're just so used to them being alive and, and knowing that they exist and knowing, oh, wow, like, like Bob Saget doesn't exist anymore, or Louis. I mean, these are guys who are friends of mine, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, sometimes the death of a person you're familiar with affects you more, um, and we're not sure why. But yeah, I've had a few lately. It's it's really getting off party, getting older. It, you know, it's going to happen more and more, and yeah. at least you, you makes you grateful to still be alive. Right? Hey, back to feeling good on UFC Unfiltered. Mackenzie Dern, Tisha Torres. Um, we get deep sometimes. Listen. Mackenzie coming off a decision loss to uh, Rodriguez. Yeah. Oh, wow. This, know what's great about this? What? Is Tisha, this is fucking great. This is a really interesting fight. Because Tisha is very good at uh, playing on top. But is she going to be able to do that with Mackenzie Dern? Is she going to be able to close down? Because I believe a lot of it's going to be grappling. I think it's going to start standing. And then I think uh, it's going to get into... Most likely Tisha getting on top, you know, and uh, I want I want to see this grappling exchange. I think this is I this is a very interesting fight because of that, because Tisha is a very she uses her her, her wrestling, uh, her MMA wrestling is very high, and Mackenzie Dern's a very high level black belt. You know what I mean? She's very good. She's really good. Um, so I, I I'm gonna say. I'm going to say Dern by submission. I'm going to say she spent so much time on the floor that she's going to find a way to get a, sum a submission. Ah, fuck. Sorry. That's my knee. That was my original guess, uh, my original pick. And now I'm going to say uh, Dern by, uh, I'm going to say Dern by decision. Uh, I was going to say a second round stoppage again, but I'm going to say Mackenzie Dern by decision. Dude, sometimes my knee locks out, bro. I rolled today for like almost 50 minutes. Fine. Good. Mounting, fucking reversals. Now I'm fucking. And it's fine. Sitting here, my knee. Ah! Anyway, Jimmy, you said what? Now, I'm going to take Dern by decision. And, and one of the biggest fights of this card, everyone is talking about Gilbert Burns, Hamzat Shemaev. Oh, my, Jimmy. Everyone. I, I'm sorry. I didn't say what round with the submission, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said second. Maybe I'm wrong. Did I say second? No, no, no. I, I am saying second right now. All right, let's keep going. Uh, this is exciting, Jimmy. Gilbert, now can I, let me point out a fight. First you do yours and then I'll tell you what I think because I want to talk. Shemaev has been a, a devastating against uh, La, Li Jing Liang and of course Gerald Mearshart. Uh, and he's beaten some good fighters um, and he has not made it out of the first round more than twice, three times, three times he's gone in the second round. Um, Gilbert Burns um, has uh, beaten Wonder Boy. Uh, again, he, he got... Uh, Stopped by uh, Kamaru, beat Tyron, beat Damian Maya, beat Gunnar Nelson. Um, everyone is thinking that Shemaev, this is just his next step on the way to maybe getting a shot at Kamaru Usman. Um, I am going to take Gilbert Burns. Um, I know Gilbert uh, was dropped by Kamaru Usman, but I think everyone is sleeping on Gilbert Burns, which I think is a mistake. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking that Shemaev may make that mistake as well. Um, I think Burns is going to, how does he do it? Um, he, he obviously has uh, uh, knockout power, but uh, I don't think he's going to knock Shemaev out. Is he going to tap him? I think he beats him by decision. Here's what I think is going to happen. I, th I think that uh, Shemaev may get a little frustrated not being able to do exactly what he wants to do with Gilbert Burns. Uh, he's not used to going out of the second round. Uh, Gilbert has been there before. I think Gilbert beats him by decision. 
I like I like where your head's at. Uh, this is what I think. I, this is this is this is where my head's at, and this is what I keep thinking of, and this is why I think Gilbert has a way better chance than people are giving him credit for. Yeah, I and I know Damien. You know, you could put. And I was just watching something with comes that was like, listen, who did he beat lately? You know, he he goes he goes he cried when he lost to Usman, dude. He's kind of funny. Comes out's fucking hysterical. He's not even saying it like. He, he uh, this shit wasn't. He's not writing this shit down. He's just saying, listen. He loses. He cries. Fucking, <laughs> it's hysterical. So he's saying, you know, he cried when he lost to Usman, and uh, and then when he 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 beat Damian Maya, who's forty years old. I'm gonna point to that Damian Maya fight. You could also point to Gunnar Nelson, but I'm gonna point to Damian Maya because Damian Maya could. I don't care if he's forty or not. He's still extremely dangerous in certain positions, and he was imposing his jujitsu, his grappling. On Gilbert. Gilbert, Gilbert, when Gilbert says he's good on the floor, I think he's being very modest. He's very good on the floor. He's, I think he could be doing well on the grappling circuit. He's that high level of a black belt, you know? So if you think he's just a guy that puts a gi on and does some jujitsu, no, he, he knows how to, he know he's very dangerous um, top and bottom. But my, getting back to that Damian Maya fight, you've seen him, his poise when he was really like with his, in the, in, the, in the with his head in like the lion's mouth, like he was really he was just very calm under fire in very bad positions, and he had the he had the timing to execute his his escapes with his jujitsu. He actually gets into a little bit of a scramble playing jujitsu, playing a grappling game, and then uses that to get up. And then when he did that, he knocked him out. So I'm looking at similar things here, where if Kamzat tries to force the grappling. It's going to be different than a guy like uh, Jay Ling, who was just trying to stand up uh, in his last fight, um, you know, and then getting his back and finishing him. I think that he can get very bad positions on Gilbert, and Gilbert has the, the strength in his jujitsu defense to not only survive, but turn the tables, at least get to his feet, if not get on top, and, you know, possibly hurt him from there. The only the only thing I'm worried about with those kind of scrambles, if he gets out and gets back up, who's gonna who's gonna break first with endurance? He got up, he got out, and he knocked out Damian Meyer off a lazy jab. Or when Damian Meyer went to hit him with a jab. Uh, you know, is if if these have these if he has these scrambles and does not knock out Kamzat, Kamzat being 27, Gilbert being 35, that's my main concern. If he starts to get worse to wear first, if he starts, so that's gonna be that's what it comes down to. So, man, so it's very exciting. I'm, I'm more than anybody else. I'm super excited. Yeah. About this fight. And Shamaya, by the way, was 24 now as a, as a wrestler too. So he's obviously, he has endurance. Now, I wasn't implying that he didn't. I'm just saying in MMA, he hasn't uh, gone uh, past the second round. Now, sometimes I go more with my, I don't have a horse in the race here. I don't really know you guys. I mean, Gilbert's been on a couple of times. We like Gilbert. I don't know comes up, but I like comes up. Yeah, I like him. I think he's a fucking beast. I like his whole thing with Darren Till. I think that's fucking. I think they got a little bromance going. I think it's hysterical. It's funny. Yeah. Uh but at the, at the end of the day, I am a jujitsu man. I'm going with Gilbert. I think it's jujitsu. If not, if he doesn't get a submission, he will. It will enable him to get back to. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a submission, his neck or a back to you know, finish. But it will enable him his defense on the floor to get back to his feet, and from there possibly a knockout so i don't know either knockout or submit i don't know is that too broad a thing a knockout or something no because i'm saying decision and then i'm thinking when is the last time a shamayev gilbert stoppage first round he's gonna be the most dangerous in the first round he's gonna escape some bad positions that's gonna try to make a decision i'm sorry i cut you off no that's no, okay buddy Combs, that's gonna try to make a fucking another example of him he's not just gonna be able to pick him up put him down and finish him he, if he doesn't smash him right away like he says he does you know, I want to see what happens. So, okay, yeah, that's an interesting point. You might be right, Matt. Well, I might be wrong. <laughs> I'm the first to say I might be wrong. No, but let's go. And obviously, uh, before we talk about uh, Aljo and Piotr Jan, um, Volkanovski, Chan Sung Jung, I mean, an interesting fight. Um, I know, uh, you know, Max Holloway uh, dropped out, so, so Jung got the fight. And I, I know Volkanovski is a pretty heavy favorite. Um, and, and it's, you know, again, I, I still think that uh, he lost one of those uh, Holloway fights, if not both, but definitely one of them. But he's still 
that that Ortega fight. I mean, he's a, as tough as they come, and he's he's a really legit champ. Uh, I want to see Chan Sung Jung win. I just like to see guys who haven't had a chance to hold the belt get it. But sometimes I bet with my heart and not my head. But I'm going to keep doing that. I say Chan Sung Jung because I want him to win. Again, I want him to, to get a chance to feel that. Hmm. Volkanovski decision. I only because I give, I give, I like, you know, you know, the Korean zombie's hard to put down, man. Hard to, hard to put away. He, I know he's been taken out, but he's going to be there in his face. But I think Alexander Volkanovski, the champ, he's just, he, I know. He's got some battles. He shows such perseverance. He's caught in chokes that other people would have tapped out and uh, pissed themselves. And he fucking just, he, he, he just gutted it himself out. He's very gritty. He's technical. He's my height. I'm going with Volkanovski. Yeah, I mean, Volkanovski, basically, you have to run him over with a fucking fire truck to knock him out. So I, I'm going to say uh, Chan Sung Jung by decision. I think it's a decision. Um, it might just come down to, 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 to one round. I, I don't think it's a... But I, I think that Volkanovski is just a little too difficult to put away. And we have Alexi Olnick coming in. Um, which I, I can't believe we've never talked to him fighting Jared Vendara on, uh, on uh, the early prelims. I'm happy that he's fighting. Them. I love his grappling. I love his grappling. I do. I really, really do. I love his fighting in general. Yeah. I mean, uh, 44 years old and still literally just putting guys to sleep. Um, crazy. Oleski, <laughs> look at you. I'll tell you right now, I think you're getting younger. I mean, look at you. <laughs> yes, I'm younger uh, year by, by year. <laughs> I'll tell you, you look great, man. At 44, to look as good as you look and to be as competitive as you are, have you had moments where you thought, like, ah, I don't know if I want to do this anymore and you just can't picture life without fighting? Uh, uh, you, know, you know, really, I have uh, two secrets. One secret right here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and second secret, my four, five kids who wait me in the home. But uh, really, uh, really, I just train a lot. And I think positively and uh, I don't know. This a real warrior way because I just train, train and train. and seen good and seen positive in my head. Aleski, let me ask you about specifically your grappling. What did you start with? What I'm a jujitsu man. I love watching you fight because I'm a submission guy. I love your naked Ezekiel. I freaking love, I know guys that know it's coming. You're still getting it from everywhere. I love it. But in general, your reversals, your control, I, your jujitsu is beautiful. But what did you start with with the grappling? Uh, yes, you're right. You you know I uh, grapple with many many great fighters with black belts, super black belts, and uh, everything good. No, <laughs> uh, usually usually uh, many guys can uh, submit me, but only gym, uh, only in gym, uh, not on the uh, uh, mat. This is very important for me. Uh, I, I don't know. I just love uh, grapple. I love jujitsu, and uh, I learned uh, my style many many years because it's my one of the favorite style. When you, what did you start with? How old were you when you started grappling? Was it jujitsu, judo? What was it? Nineteen, one nine, nineteen years. I, the first time I come into the. In 1996, I started my training. I first time coming to gym. I never trained before. Uh, I trained before one month box, one month uh, karate, one month taekwondo. But uh, this was not very interesting for me because my coach said, "Oh, this no, uh, no. If you boxer, no legal uh, clinch, no legal takedown, no legal nothing. If you." Uh, study judo, no legal punch, no legal choke, uh, no legal nothing. And I, uh, in my mind, I will try find uh, uh, 
martial arts where where I can do everything, where I can punch, where I can uh, choke, where I can uh, work on the ground or standing, everything. This was very important for me. Did I, what, was there anything that motivated you to go into the gym? Like, were you just bored or you wanted to learn it? Or you, what made you actually decide to start? I don't know. You, you know, uh, in a uh, different time, was this a different motivation for me. First, uh, when I started to uh, study uh, martial arts, this was motivation to prove myself uh, I can do that. I'm not afraid. I'm not pussy boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's my nickname. <laughs> I will be a strong guy. I will be. I. I must uh, uh, defend myself. I must defend my friend, my family, my kids, uh, and everyone who is uh, weak. Uh, this was was my first uh, goal. After I was to uh, prove my uh, dream my coach, my uh, country, uh, flag of my country. But uh, now, uh, you know, uh, I prove for myself again. This look like like circle, uh, circle, circle. And 25 years ago, I won't prove myself. In a big age, in uh, many, many, many difficulties, uh, but I still uh, fight in the best, uh, uh, promotion the world with uh, best and strongest guy in the world. That's very important for me, for myself, not for this guy, for this guy, for my friends, for for somebody else. Most important this for me right now. Let, let me ask you, Oleski, when you're done fighting, hopefully not for many years, but let's say your wife says you're done getting punched, no more pun, no more fighting. Could we ever see you in like an Abu Dhabi or a submission grappling or something like that, still testing your skills? Not now, maybe in your 50s, whenever you're done fighting. A grappling circuit, you ever think about doing something like that? Because I would love to see your jujitsu in a, a grappling match on the, on the world stage with that. Thank you, why not? If I got a good proposition, I have pleasure grapple everywhere. But, but you know, before I uh, take uh, part competition many, many times in combat sambo, in uh, sambo, in, uh, in, in grappling too, uh, in United States and other country, most of uh, my uh, competition I win. <laughs> but, this, but this is not my uh, first goal right now. First goal right now, of course, UFC. Can I point out that I really enjoyed your win over Verdum? I thought that win was because if you look on paper, he's such a high level jujitsu uh, player and you're known for your grappling. You would think, man, he's a big guy. He's got very good jujitsu. But the way you played your defense and you timed your counters and then you re survived the Kimuras and you you kept your calm and you beat a guy that people thought would maybe submit you. It was awesome. I loved it. I'm just, now that I'm talking to you, I just wanted to tell you that. What did you think when you were matched up with him? With pleasure. Fabrizio <laughs> Verdun, <laughs> big respect for, for me, but uh, I'm ready for a uh, grapple match. Uh, but, but you know, when I just signed in UFC uh, many years ago, I, I know about the best uh, grappler in UFC. This is uh, Fabricio Verdum. In my in my way, so every, everyone everyone knows that. Nobody don't want to uh, grapple with uh, Fabricio. And this was uh, my uh, challenge for myself. I am afraid. Uh, you know this side. I am afraid, uh, uh, Fabricio. And this side, I'm I must uh, fight with him. Because I don't want to live in my soul with this uh, afraid. Right. But so I, I must fight because we must uh, <laughs> know who is better. <laughs> would you rather lose a fight? Would you rather lose a fight and know the answer than never fight someone and not know the answer? Uh, it depends uh, from God and from uh, my. Uh, Head and head of Fabricio and uh, this, you, you know, this uh, was a very, very cool uh, check, check mat match because this 
not only muscle, not only how big you fist, how strong you head. This was a very, very uh, smart match. Uh, my, my opinion. I know if I just try try submit him, he try submit me. This is not very interested for uh, fans, for everybody. And I, uh, of course, uh, Fabricio uh, work with this match and uh, many times. Uh, this was diff difficult for me and uh, difficult mentality. But uh, thanks God, we do that. And what did you do? What kind of work did you do when you were a younger guy? Before you were fighting full time, what kind of jobs did you have when you were coming up? <laughs> you know, my English is not, not enough to explain everything. But uh, before, uh, before I start uh, uh, make my professional, uh, my, my uh, martial arts professional, I have many, many other professionals, uh, more than 20. Uh, I was a music group pro pro producer. I was. Uh, I was a bodyguard. Uh, I work. I was work a lawyer. You're a lawyer? Yes, I am a detective. I am. I, I have a police. Uh, I I study police uh, five almost six years, and I work in the police. I was a de detective and to many, many other pro professionals. Wow, so being a lawyer, it's good because you can look over your own contracts and you probably are able to read a contract better than most fighters since you have uh, experience with the law and stuff like that. Yes, but you know, you, you can uh, work in any profession, of course, but uh, you must pro to yourself. If I, uh, I don't want to uh, work uh, any professional, maybe lawyer, maybe other professional, and think, oh, maybe I can fight in UFC, maybe I can fight in Pride, and I can Pride, maybe, maybe, yes, maybe no. And I choose this way, this way, way of my life. When I choose this uh, way, I make, uh, I give all my possibilities, uh, all my, I give myself all for for this way and what kind of music did you produce was there was there one style or one band uh, you, you know this was like uh psych hello, hello. yeah yeah was like psychode psychedelic psychedelic Psy psychedelic it sounds this like rave rave music like boom boom, boom, boom. No, not rave. Like, that? like this type of stuff no not rave matt not rave i'm sorry uh, no but, it's not rave no oh. Rock, rock and psychedelic together. Oh. Now, do you play any instruments or do you sing or do you just produce? No, 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 no just produce. Uh, I'm not very good <laughs> musician. <laughs> just, what a fascinating guy, though. You really, you have a, a, a very full life outside of fighting. So after you're done fighting, you can probably have a, a bunch of different directions you can go in, whatever that is. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, look, good luck against uh, Jared Vendara on, uh, on Saturday night. Uh, you're just, you're a phenom. And, and the fact that you are still fighting at 44 and you still are as competitive in every fight, um, you know, you, again, fans love you. And, and I'm happy that you're still fighting and, and have a great fight on Saturday. Thank you very much. With God's help, everything. All right, Aleski. Thanks, Alexi. Appreciate it. Matt, thank you very much. What an interesting guy, though, like to have had all those skills, uh, the lawyer. I don't know why we don't think fighters can be lawyers, but that's just an interesting thing to learn. Jimmy, when he was matched up with uh, with Verdun, uh, I really thought he was going to yeah. have a hard time. And it looked that way. But what a chess match. He's really calm on the fire, man. And he's one of those guys who's like, oh, man, is he slowing down? Also, he's coming in with these big hooks. And he's like got perseverance. Uh, he's got a style unique to his own. It's not just a grappler. The next thing he's punching you in the face. You know, he has unique submission, unique submissions where it's a rarity. A lot, nine out of ten guys, nine out of ten guys aren't going to pull off a naked Ezekiel with gloves on. It's a, it's a naked choke. What I mean by naked is you don't have to wear a jacket or a gi for it. So he's using his arms and, and he just has this choke. He's closing your carotid arteries. 
and uh, <laughs> you know it's coming, and and, and you, he's still getting it. So it's pretty amazing. He's an amazing uh, individual. Yeah, he really is. And uh, I should have asked him more about the Mark Hunt fight because that was such a good fight in that his leg was taking such a beating. Um, and and I, I forget who was doing, who was calling the fight. I want to, I want to say Paul Felder, um, but they were talking about how the, the nerve in that leg gets dead and it's hard for you to shoot for takedowns. Um, and he wound up taking a really hard shot from Mark Hunt and he wound up dropping Mark Hunt. That was a great fucking fight. And then he wound up strangling him. Um, really, really great fight. So I should have asked him about that, but wasn't meant to be. All right, Matt, we got to cover these last couple of fights. Um, you know, we covered the main event. Now, obviously, we can't, uh, you don't have to do a pick Piotr Jan against uh, Aljamain Sterling. Yeah, I was, I was very involved in the camp, you know, down there for the sparring and whatnot. So uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you off air. Okay. But, uh, you know, I'm going with Sterling. And, uh, yeah, of course, yes. I'll tell, <laughs> I'll tell you what I thought uh, after the fact. I'm going to take Aljo, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to take Aljo. I'm going to take Aljo, even though Piotr Jan is extremely tough. I think that Aljo finds a way to get on his back. And again, like when, no matter how tough, Mark Hunt is tough, but if you get the neck, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you can't breathe. Um, I think Aljo gets him in the third round. Um, that's what I'm predicting. Uh, Sterling remains the champion third round. I think he gets on his back. Jimmy. Yeah, I'll tell you. I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm very similar to your uh, thinking what you're thinking, but we'll talk about it later. Uh, Jimmy, I can't wait for the weekend for the fights. It's so exciting. Uh, a, a movie that I recently revisited, and I'll tell you right now, I did not think much of it the first time because it's very long, very long, and uh, it could be boring to some if they're not into it. But you know what? I don't know why, but I, I gave it another chance while I was shaving my head and doing my bathroom business on my iPad, you know? Uh and it's called Blade Blade Runner twenty forty nine, the 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 sequel to Blade Runner. What is it twenty twenty nine? I don't. Know. You got me. You're the, no, the, it's a sequel to the um, Harrison Ford one. You know he's in this one also. But uh, did you ever see it? No. I'll tell you, it's it's one of those. It's really it's really deep, and it's and I'm gonna say, I enjoy. It's all about, well, if I had to watch this in a theater, it'd probably be a little too much. It's one of those things where it's long. You don't have to see it if you're very, you know, bright, maybe bright-eyed and bushy-tailed or whatever. It's a, it's a long, slow burn. But there's a lot going on. It's very deep. And uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. The main guy in it, who the fuck is he? Guys, who's in Blade Runner 2049? The main character in it. Gerard Depardieu. Stop it, Jimmy. Stop. No, don't say Mr. Bean. It's not either one of those guys. Ah, see, Rowan Atkins. Okay. Guys, look up, look it up for me, please. Ryan Gosling. Gosh, you know him, Ryan Gosling. Sure. Isn't he from uh Gosford Park? Isn't he from Throw Throwback Mountain? Brokeback Mountain? Throwback. No, was that him? No, that was uh Heath Ledger and um I'm way off. I'm way is that Gyllenhaal? Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah, I'm sorry, but this guy's got that kind of look. But you want to see him in a broke back mountain situation. I understand. That slipped out, Matt. <laughs> you want to go camping with him. Why, so Why you gotta be so weird, Jimmy? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, he was great in this. And the female, there's some crap. Guys, what's the cast on this? I should really do my homework. There's, there's, they were, the, the characters. What does that say? Anna, what does that say? Anna De Armas. I don't know which one was that. I don't got a picture. I don't know. Listen. They were great. There's, and also, I forget the blonde in it who was the, um, she was the, uh, another cop. And she was like the, uh, she was like the human cop that was helping. I think she was human. But anyway, the, listen, it's basically, a Blade Runner is, it's based, they're, um, they're like cops that are, they, they, they hunt down like rogue, like fucking cyborgs. Like, like, right. like they look human, but they're robots. They, they kill, they find them and they, and, and they exterminate them. The ones that are like, that went south or something. Or, you know, older models that are, you know, that type of thing. And it gets pretty deep. And it's, and it's a, and it's a, it's a, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Blade Runner 2049. I'm going to go ahead and say it. What I'm not enjoying, and I gave up on, is that Vikings Valhalla. It's a little, it's fucking lemon. I, I, what a shame. Because I was trying to give it a chance. And I just, sure. I'm not, this is the problem. If I'm four episodes deep, 
and I'm not connecting to any characters. Yeah. yeah I'm out. Sometimes a second episode you got to get to, like sometimes you go through something like Yellowstone. I enjoyed the first one and the second one. I was like, eh, like I'll give that another shot on the second episode. But like if, if you're four episodes in fucking forget it. And what I would recommend is that Reacher is pretty good on Amazon Prime. I'm enjoying that. I enjoy that guy who's playing him. He was Hawk on Hawk and Dove on Titans. He's a, he's a big dude. He's uh he was in the Ninja Turtles, whatever. I forgot his name, but that Reacher is a good one. But I'll tell you, give it. I gave up on Vikings Valhalla. And if you got like two hours and a half, or almost close to three hours to to kill a spread, all, a, a, you know, spread out during how many days? Watch that Blade Runner. 20. Okay. It's like a smart sci-fi, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, hey, that's it, Jay, Jimmy. What else? Um, I'm good, man. I'm going to Poughkeepsie Friday and Saturday um at the laugh it up comedy club week after that is dc so go to my website i got new jersey coming up i got delaware coming up and uh i'm going to talk to you this weekend matt about these fights i cannot wait saturday night um volkanovsky chan sung jung this is an incredible card ufc 273 of course um it's from veterans memorial arena in jacksonville florida prelims our early prelims are six prelims eight main card 10 p.m this saturday i'm going to be Helping out the NYPD. I had this this uh, this plan for a little bit, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a a two hour two hour like seminar and like meet and greet and stuff. But I'm going to be helping out the police with some of they have the jujitsu team, the NYPD jujitsu team. So I'm going there to go over some uh, some of my favorite techniques. You know, we'll be getting out of some bad positions, having some fun. You know what I mean? So uh, it's going to be a jujitsu party over there. So that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in uh. I think at the uh, the academy and uh, where is it? Not Astoria. I don't know. I'll be at, I'll be I'll be with the police, the NYPD team, police uh, jujitsu team this Saturday. But uh, and that's during the morning, and then at the night night time, I'm obviously watching the fucking fights. Uh, Jimmy, you'll be performing. So should I not text you anything? No, don't text me because a lot of times I'll watch during in between shows. I'll watch a little, and then I'll watch the the. Uh, Usually the main, I'll catch some of the main card when I get home and have to go back and watch the opening fights again on Fight Pass. So uh, you don't text me until uh, uh, after because uh, from 10 to 12, I'll probably be working. How about this? I will text you. Uh, how about this? You'll text me when you're watching. That way. Okay. I'll text you. you. You'll see it. It'll be a, it'll be a, a little kiss emoji or, or uh, you'll know it's me. No, no eggplant emojis. Jimmy, I'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, pal. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, buddy.